All right, you have a battery powered clock, a quartz clock, and it's not working. You try to place in the battery, you spin the battery to make sure that it's got good contact. Nothing, still doesn't work. So you need to replace the movie. The little black box in the back. So you go to the store or you go online. Let's say you go to the store and you look at the wall and there's 18 different options of these same little black boxes. And you go, what on earth am I supposed to do? How do I know which one to get? Or you go online and it's even worse because there's 347 million different options and you go, ah, I don't even know where to start. I'm going to get you there. I'm Logan of Listening Clockworks and we're going to talk about how to replace a movement in your quartz clock um, or maybe to buy a movement for a clock that you're making. Uh, now, you can't see very well in the video, but I've got five big old drawers full of quartz stuff here and more over there that you can't see. Um, hundreds of dollars worth, worth of stuff. Now, I don't want you to be in this predicament where you go, man, I have to buy hundreds of dollars worth of stuff to get the right one because I keep buying the wrong ones. Um, so I want to walk you through all the things that we've got here, all the different options so that you know which one to buy so you can buy one and be done instead of having to buy a bunch and figure it out. I've got all this stuff so that a customer can come in, bring just about any clock and say, hey, fix it. And I can say, I'll fix it right now um, because I've got it on hand. But um, I want you to be able to know exactly which movement you need so that you can buy that online or from the store and replace it yourself. Um, it's pretty easy to replace, getting to it varies. Every clock is a little different how you take it apart. Um, but once you get the little black box out, and then replacing it is pretty easy. So let's talk through how you know which movement to get. So the first thing is you need to know what the movement needs to do. So maybe it just keeps time like the basic little black box. It's just got hands, no melody, no pendulum, nothing. That's something like this. Or maybe it has a pendulum like this. Um, or maybe it has a melody, it sings songs like this guy here, um, or like uh, this one here, it's got a speaker. Um, or maybe it sings a melody and it has a pendulum like this one here, or like uh, this Takane movie. So lots of different options. So you need to know, what does it do? Does it just keep time? Does it have a pendulum? Um, does it do a melody or does it do a melody and pendulum? And by the way, sometimes you'll have a clock that has a melody, but it's got a movement that looks like this, except it's got a tail. It's got this wire hanging out. This is called a trigger movement. So you need either just a regular old movement or you need a trigger movement if it does a melody, um, or you might need a pendulum chiming movement um, or just a chiming movement. Um, that's the first thing you got to figure out. Now, if it's one of these uh, melody movements, um, you might need to do some Googling to figure out exactly which one it is, what style it is. There's a lot, a lot of different brands. Now, I'll tell you though, with the information that we're going to talk about in this video, um, you can convert from one to another. So if you're like, I can't get one of these or I don't want to spend the money for one of these, you, maybe you can find a different one that will meet your needs as long as you know the information that we're about to discuss. So um, now that you know which, what the functionality of the movement is, you need to know what type of hands it uses. So there are two types of hands. There are uh, eye shaft hands and there are push on hands. So with the eye shaft, you can't see it well in the video, but basically this gray part is kind of a metallic pot metal. It's threaded, but it's like a circle with the ears cut off. So if you're familiar with carburetors, it's a double D. Um, basically, it's a circle with two flats on the side. Um, and so it's threaded, so you can use a nut to hold the hand on. This is a push-on type. You notice the difference that it um, is it's all plastic here at the end, where the minute hand goes. Um, and so in this case, the hand, minute hand just pushes on. Now, notice that here where the hour hand goes and here where the hour hand goes is the same. So hour hands always just push right on. So it's mechanical, electric, battery, whatever, they all pretty much the same where the hour hand just pushes on. Um, and so here you just need to know the minute hand. Does the minute hand um, push on or does it need an eye shaft? Is it eye shaft where it needs to be uh, tightened down with a nut? Now there is another type of push on hand. It looks like this, okay? So these are thread-in type movements because the, uh, the threads here are what hold it in place. But this is called a snap-in movement. 
okay? So there's no, no threads here, so it just snaps in place. And you notice there's these little um, you know, ledges that the clips can hang on to, so the little clip holds it in place, and it just snaps in. Um, now you also notice that is the same on this thread in one. It's got those there. So most of the time, you can put in a movement like this and it'll snap in just like this one will. But there's a catch. The diameter of the hand shaft, uh, the hour hand shaft, and the mini hand shaft is different. And the second hand, by the way, most of the time. Um, so the hand shaft sizes are different, different diameters. And so it is not a one for one swap. Um, you won't be able to put the hands on. And we're not going to talk about hand conversion or adaptation in this video because that gets into the weeds a little too much. If you're buying new hands, it doesn't matter. Just new hands, new movement, you're good to go. Um, as long as the hole through the face of the clock is big enough for the shaft diameter, about eight millimeters. Um, so those are your two types of hands, eye shaft or push on, eye shaft or push on. Um, with this caveat that sometimes you have the snap-in type movement with different size hands. Um, and there are also, by the way, smaller uh, push-on hands like for little alarm clocks and things like that. Um, uh, so now you know what type of, you know what the functionality is, you know what type of hands it has. Um, the next thing you need to know is the diameter of the shaft. So we're looking, we're talking about this shiny threaded shaft right here. Most of the time, it's about eight millimeters, about five sixteenths of an inch diameter. Every once in a while, we'll run into one with a larger diameter shaft. This is about a 10 millimeter, um, about a three eighths, or a little bigger than three eighths. Um, so just watch out for that. But most of the time, almost all the time, you'll have the same diameter shaft. So just double check that. The other thing you need to know, though, and this is one of the most important things, is the shaft length, the length of the hand shaft. And so what we're talking about is length from the face of this movement here to the end of the minute hand hand shaft. So on this one, better one. this one here, um, we're talking about from the face here to the end of the threaded part. All you got to do is take a ruler and put it up against the face. just like this, not up against this ledge, but on the face itself. And then just measure to the very end, which on this one is a 19 millimeter. Same thing here. Just measure to the very end. Uh, 22 millimeter on this one. And it might be listed in metric or it might be listed in US. Um, so, you know, or it might be listed in both. So this one, you know, if you measure it here is about seven eighths of an inch. Um, and this one is about just over three quarters. Um, so uh, you need to know the length of the shaft. So first thing, what's the functionality? Second thing, um, what type of hands does it have? Double check the diameter of the, the uh, threaded shaft and then measure the length of the hand shaft. We're almost there, um, but the next thing you need to think about is the second hand sweep. So if you don't have a second hand, it doesn't matter at all, ignore this part. If you do have a second hand, there are two options. So there is stepping sweep and there is continuous sweep. What that means is stepping sweep means the second hand ticks um, it steps. If the continuous sweep, it means the second hand just moves continuously. Uh, sometimes stepping sweep movements will tick in a way that you can hear them. Sometimes they're really quiet. Um, it just depends on the one that you buy. Uh, so if, you, if the noise really bothers you, you might want to consider a continuous sweep. Um, but if you don't care what the second hand does, then it doesn't matter. Uh, the next thing you need to think about is the torque. So how long the hands are determines how much torque the movement is going to be able to withstand, or how much it's going to undergo. So if the hands are six inches or longer, the rule of thumb is go with a high torque movement. So it'll be listed, when you're shopping for the movement, it'll be listed as high torque or low torque. And just to give you an example, um, let's see here. There we go. Um, these are just made by different companies, so they look a little different, but you can see here, one's a high torque, one's a low torque, um, and there's really no way to tell the difference. Um, uh, in this case, yeah, this one's a low torque, and this one's a high torque. Um, this is the, uh, you know, of course, different hand styles, but they look identical. <laughs> the only way to know the difference is by what the manu manufacturer says. And really, they're essentially the same on the inside, it's just that the high torque has a little bit tighter clutch so that the hands don't slip and fall. 
Um, but it never hurts to go with a high torque movement. So if you're not sure, then it's fine to go with a high torque movement. But if you have long hands, you need to make sure that it actually is a high torque movement. Um, so that is it in a nutshell. What's the functionality? What type of hands? Um, shaft diameter, shaft length, uh, second hand sweep, and then uh, torque, high torque or low torque. Um, if you know each of those things, you can narrow it down and find the exact right movement that you need. So I hope this helps. I hope this gets you pointed in the right direction um, and gives you enough information to know what movement to buy. Or I hope this helps you go, you know what? I don't want to do this. I'd rather pay you. That's fine too. No shame. I won't tell anybody. Um, but I hope this helps and uh, is helpful as you repair your own clocks or other people's clocks um, or just want to know more about clocks. Um, uh, and uh, you guys have a good day. I'll see you next time.